Welcome to the Top 10 Gardener with Master Gardener, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and top 10 advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your garden host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of Northern Arizona. Oh, you, the weather finally turned. So the mountain, the mountain folks, it's spring here finally. The desert folks have been, they haven't been coming up the hill because it's so pleasant down in the valleys, the deserts, the Tucsons, Phoenix, Scottsdales. They've been staying down there. That changed this week. Now it's our turn. It's beautiful. It's why we live up here. And so it'll be this way for the rest of, well, the season till, till next autumn. It, the plants, we notice the plants. So we've been getting in, we've been stocking. I've got two acres of plants. There's just, there's acres of plants. And when it's cold out, when there's snow and there's frost, mainly we're focused on evergreens. So lots of evergreens. There's some evergreens that bloom early, like raphiolyptus and rhododendrons and azaleas. And we like those. And we've got plenty of those. The peonies are going fast. I mean, they're just almost about to bloom. It's amazing. But now, when the weather finally turns nice, we'll get trucks in. So we unloaded maybe two, three semi loads of plants this week. And everything coming off the truck is in full color. It is so exciting. It's like Christmas for gardeners. Insider tip, at least here at Waters Garden Center. So this is in Prescott. So if you want the freshest flowers, uh, vegetables, herbs, that truck comes in Wednesday afternoon. So if you want to just, if you want to pick now, they're not organized. So it takes us a day to get them all segmented out and all the tomatoes here, all the pe peppers here, all the flowers here, all the herbs over there. But if you want to just par peruse and just kind of take a look at, or, or just see what's there, it's kind of exciting to see all these plants on racks of, of just hundred. I mean, just literally hundreds of plants, dozens and dozens of racks of flowers. And it's just fun to peruse them. So some of the, the insider folks, they know, oh, I'm going to go on Wednesday. I'm not waiting to the weekend because they're picked over. I want first dibs. So they come in. Trees and shrubs typically show up either Thursday or Friday afternoon. Or, or actually, there's several trucks, but they show up Thursdays and Fridays. So you can see shrubs like lilacs, forsythia, roses, and all these others. They come in then. So it's the, the back half of the week is restocked every week at the garden center so that we're making ready for the weekend. So sales, everyone has Saturday off, most folks, not everyone, most. And so you'll see there's this, there's twice the volume on a Saturday. And what's interesting, this is unique to retirement town, which is Prescott or this, this region is Monday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day, but Saturday, the sales, it's the same the same customer count, the same sales growth, the same, the same. But then Saturday hits, it's like, boink, it just kind of goes off the charts. So we are, we always gear up for the Saturday. But the insider tip is, come Friday afternoon, because you, you want to beat everyone else. The rest, the entire community is coming in on Saturday. You want to get your garden centers Friday, get you that insider tip. Another thing is happening. Um, there's two things, and, and I'm, I'm noticing that uh, customers are starting to comment. Things like their native plants, uh, crepe myrtles, they're not they're not leafing out. What's going on? Is it dead? Smoke bush. Uh, these things that are that like the summer, they don't like spring. They want it to be. They want the nighttime temperatures to be in the 70s, not not in the 40s and 30s. And so they're waiting. Grapes. They're waiting. So if the things aren't quite waking up yet, give them another two, three weeks. They will. If ever you want to test that, you take your thumbnail, you scrape the bark off. And if the bark, if the wood underneath the bark is green, that plant or at least that branch is very much alive. If it's white or brown, okay, that branch is dead. You can prune it off. And so will it come back from the roots? Yeah, very possibly. Uh, but it's a, it's a quick, easy way going, huh, I wonder if I'm impatient or is this crepe myrtle really alive? Just thumbnail, scrape it off. It's green underneath. You are good to go. It's just waiting for the nighttime temperatures to be warm enough. 
I did notice that a lot of my native plants are starting to leaf out now. So the most famous, well, I guess there are several famous ones. Uh, the the one that I guess is most famous on on the in the country, and it is a top seller here. Would be Arizona cypress. It's a big evergreen. It sort of looks like a juniper, but it's not. So it doesn't form a berry. It forms a pine cone. So it's a different, about the size of a golf ball, but it has that same shape as a alligator juniper or a, a shaggy bark juniper. Big, you know, 20 foot tall, 12 foot wide, nice round shape. We use them to block the wind and block neighbors, block a barn, block. We use them to block. They're great, fast growing. They haven't quite taken off yet. The most famous, or one of my favorites, I guess, my favorite native shrub is Ellie Agnes. If you just think they took two names, Ellie and Agnes, put them together, Ellie Agnes, or common name, silverberry. That is a plant that is starting to actively grow right now. This is an evergreen shrub. It gets, mine is easily above my head. And, and as far as your, your, your arm length can go out, it's big, big, great, big evergreen shrub. So, so I'm using it to soften up six foot cedar fence. Um, so it, it just brightens that area, but I want a native. I want it to get it established. And then I don't want to care for that thing anymore. That's what, that's what silverberry can do for you. I think it's by far a better choice than red tipped Photinia, which is the number one seller for big evergreen shrubs. Uh, but you know, evergreen red tipped Photinia deer eat on it. It gets mildew rabbits come after it. I mean, I just, Man, if there's 10 things in the neighborhood it can get, it'll get 11. It just gets, it can, it's fast growing. So it grows out of it pretty quick, but we're probably going to make some money off of you at the garden center because you're going to be in going, hey, how do I, how do I keep the mildew off? Well, what do I have to do to keep the deer off? How do I, how do I, oh, it's turning yellow in the winter. Why? Because it's not a fertilizer. It's just a high care plant. Uh, Ellie Agnes low care plant it once get it rooted that's all you actually i put mine on a drip system i fertilize it like crazy until it's up to the size i want and then i cut it off the irrigation and then it, it's on its own i just let her go that's that's all the care i have it's so easy and they're actively growing right now now the uh, eliagnus is native it's got kind of a blue and gray look to it or blue gray it's got a native -y arizona look. Says, look i'm from arizona you could tell they make another one called, um, what they call it? It's got a silver highlight to it. It's the same blue foliage, but it has gold on it. So now if, if you've got a real dark rock, you know, like those mocha, mocha and, and, and the chocolate colored rocks are popular right now. Well, those can be hot. They radiate heat like crazy. Well, a native, they're going to love that. It's perfectly fine with that. Go for it. And the light color is striking against that dark, that, that gold against the dark mochas. Looks really, really sharp. The other one that looks good with that is, is manzanita. And we specialize in manzanita here. So, so you're seeing a native plant out there as you walk the forest, about head high. Um, and then it's, it's been in bloom. It's got a little bell-shaped flower. The bees like it because it's a pollinator early on. That plant is amazing. The, the secret is don't put it on your drip system. Just plant it and water by hand when you remember to water it. And it'll live. So we've got three, four sizes. So the standard one, the one that grows native, that gets too big so many places. We've got another one that's kind of chest high, then hip high, and then ankle high called Kinnick Kinnick. Or what's the other name? Bearberry is another common name for that. It's the same manzanita, it's good, but it only gets about ankle high and just spreads. It's great. Just same red bark, same evergreen, same flower. Great native. The other one that that I think more Californians should look at. So we don't grow a lot of cactus. See, everyone moves here from Midwest. We get, I want cactus. I want to look like Phoenix. Well, there's not many choices up here. But we have tremendous choices when it comes to yuccas and agaves. We have more choices than anywhere else in the country. So some native ones. So artichoke agave is probably the number one seller as far as, that's called century plant. Or, you know, once every hundred years, it's supposed to bloom. It's actually much sooner than that. Out in the wild, maybe, but in your yard, once every 20 years, it's going to bloom, have that magical flower. And then yuccas, um, there's red yuccas, probably number one seller, but we have three sizes. We've got giant red yucca, gets as big as you and I, with these big old flowers, gets the standard yucca, gets about hip high. Then we've got a dwarf or brake light yuccas. It's dwarfy, 
We use it often in raised beds, containers, that kind of stuff, but the same red flower. And the flowers look like brake lights, thus the name brake light yucca. Oh, we got so much in store for you this, this show. I don't go anywhere. We got to pay some bills with some advertisement. Be right back after this. Water's companion plants for April are Purple Twist Plums, Perfume Lilacs, Columbine, and Arizona Gallardia. Gallardia is the perfect mountain perennial with huge fiery flowers on a compact plant. She loves the heat and super drought hardy. You can count on this bloomer to show off all summer long in raised beds, containers, or in the garden. Havelina and rabbit proof. This bloomer is a must-have Arizona plant. Arizona Gallardia, found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join his daily podcast for timely garden advice, seasonally right for the gardens. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott or through his website at top10gardener.com. 